确定报告是阴性后，后续才会得以放行，并且完成后续的检疫程序。To Taiwan, so now going through immigration, and um, yeah, PCR test came negative. Love to hear that. If I'm not all messed up in the head, most people believe on the outside, they say China has changed me, has put me on a spliff, torn me around and spanked me on my backside and forced me to say the other good side about China and the good side and the good side only. But in reality, the bigger picture is different from what you imagine. For years, I've been fascinated by this side of the world and I'm hooked, and I'm hooked so deep because it's a place that is spiritually driven. Ticket left and right, no hesitation, no sympathy or whatsoever. You know, the guy is doing his job. And in my life, I share and I share things not to be liked or to be famous. My films are free and it's a gift to you, those who seek the truth, those who believe, those who dream the dreamers, those who don't just speak. I think the baby bloomers, the Gen Z, the millennium, those all in between. I mean, I'm talking about those who are curious to explore, to see the world, to see the most fascinating place our planet can offer. I'm talking about Asia, my friend, China to be specific. I've been coming to this part of the world since 2018 and since then my life has changed for the good. Nope, don't have a fiance, not married, girlfriend, oh you gotta be kidding. Nope, I'm a lone rider my friend and I've always been and I'm a social creature and fairly so. In Taiwan and in mainland China my personality remains the same. It's me, it never changes. But there are things that does change during my time in Taiwan and now here in mainland China. You see, the politics is freakishly freaky when it comes towards the name Taiwan and mainland China. Listen, if I was a politician and to rank up off the scoreboard, then I would say something freaky. I mean, so freaky, and then those who are brain dead would soak it so well and then elect me, and then I would screw them over so deep. Boy, in this case, I won't screw you. 
because there's nothing to be screwed and I'm already being screwed. Okay, there's little kids, they're all climbing. Of course, they have a lot of energy than me. Oh, you got you lot gonna enjoy it. You lot are going to enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'm gonna spend a bit more time here, mate. I like it here. I'm not bitter. But I'm here to share my honest experience of my time living in Taiwan. They say it's controversial to talk about these things. They say it's a taboo. Others argue bitterly and say Taiwan is a country. Wise others say Taiwan is part of China. Chances are, if you're a Westerner, an anti China viewer, chances are you're fisting a punch, waiting to punch me through the screen, waiting for what I might say next. Well, I think it's fair to say, no politics, and my channel is all about traveling and experiences, and I've been doing it for years, in many, many, many countries. Country. So good, but it's so freaking cold, mate. <laughs> the rich are all grown richer while the poor all took a hit, and his friends were all in jail, and he lost all of his rights, and the people were divided, and the earth wasn't even fit for life, and he wanted to go back, but by then it was too late because stupid followed evil, and that was nowhere. Mainland China versus Taiwan. Oh, it's so cold. So bloody cold. <laughs> Can't stand it. Oh, this is this is China for you. Oh, I want to get to winter in this part of the world in East Asia. Bloody hell. No politics. Politics aside. And uh, oh wow, look at that sweet ride. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Fantastic. Look at that. You know what, the one behind that, I prefer that one better. Here we go. Bye bye. See you later. For a rich person here in the center of let's say, the capital here in Beijing. What can I say? Right? Honest video. I mean, it's a very honest video. I used to live in Taiwan and uh, now I'm living in the mainland here in China. When I got a 
talk about, oh, why is it that, or oh, blah, blah, blah. No, we're just gonna get to the nitty gritty, right? I think the first thing is that let's start with, um, because it's a lot to cover, let's start with immigration. Other things like immigration and visa. Um, if you are a British person and uh, you have a British passport or, Ameri or American passport, Western passport, so most likely in the highland of Taiwan, basically, you can get, let's say, 30 days or three month visa free, so you can enter Taiwan. You can just explore the island. It's a very small place, really. And uh, well, whereas for here, if you want to come here for a visit in the mainland, you have to you have to apply for a visa. And the visa is not it's not that much. You know, but of course you know, it can be a little bit tedious as well. But once you pay, well, you can get the visa ASAP for tourists. And if you're coming here to work, it's different, totally different, right? And the, the process between the mainland and Taiwan is totally different. And I've gone through that, that process, right? And I saw a massive difference, right? I think um, Taiwan, when he wants to get into that place, Basically, it's not really that hard. I mean, the process is very smooth, very easy, straightforward. It wasn't too long, it wasn't complicated when it comes to us getting the visa. Of course, I have to notarize my document and legalize it. And um, for Taiwan, it wasn't as much compared to, let's say, the mainland, where basically I have to legalize literally every single thing and it costs so much, right? It was expensive. I think and now they're changing that so yeah i lose for the newcomers coming here to china to work oh man you don't have to worry too much i think um they're cutting down on that that's brilliant and then now moving away from the visa side i'll say when it comes to what's accommodation oh boy when it comes to accommodation in taiwan very expensive i mean I mean, for what you get as well, it's not amazing, honestly. And uh, I think the apartments in in Taiwan, they're just rubbish. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but they're very outdated, very, very outdated. It, it makes you feel depressed when you're living there. And even the facade of most of the buildings as well, it just looks so old. Yes, of course, in Taipei, it looks brilliant, and some up and coming cities all right but still this because it's a very small island so space is it's very rare you know it doesn't come like that easy you understand so yeah so that's the one thing i'll say when it comes to us um, apartments in taiwan it's very small very expensive and uh the environments as well like where these apartments are they're not, they're not livable. I mean, I don't, I, didn't, I don't like it at all. You know, of course, if, if you have the money, if you want to splash, you want to go big, then feel free, right? You can definitely, you can definitely find a good apartment that you can pay more. Most of your, I think most of your handing will go towards that, right? And uh, yeah, it's affordable, don't get me wrong. I mean, in terms of like eating out, going out for a run or whatever, or like doing some basic things really, or sign up for a gym it's not as expensive compared to here but we'll get to that fast for here in the mainland oh boy I cannot believe it the mainland it's I mean the apartments here they're so spacious they're so amazing oh I'm on the sky bridge oh let me just show you look at this it's amazing look at that Iconic. One, that's the Hello, Niha. <laughs> All right. There you go. I'm in China. Mainland China. Look at that. Well, let me just zoom in. Wow, that is, that is gorgeous, isn't it? Very gorgeous. What a place. I mean, what a place. I love it, man. It's fantastic. I'm wearing gloves or else I think um, 
My hands were freeze, you understand? So, and uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, apartments here are just amazing. Like what I'm, what I'm paying now, it's like, of course I'm paying a bit more. Accommodation in China is very spacious. Depends on your budget as well. But normally like, it's so modern, you are. You're, oh, it's amazing. What I'm staying right now, I'm paying like 800, how much? I think $800. Two bedroom with one spare room here in Beijing. And uh, yeah, and that is expensive, right? Uh, imagine the second tier cities even lower I mean honestly it's going to get even better and better so if you go to the third tier second tier they're much much cheaper I think yeah it's too noisy but anyways on the other thing I'll say is I'm just waiting waiting for them to give me away I can't risk it I will never risk it I'm just waiting for this one so this is the thing, now we're going to jump onto safety. <laughs> oh my god, man. While we're on the street, I think it's fair for us to talk about the safety, right? When it comes to us, mainland and Taiwan. So, you see here, the one thing you will notice, their bikes, their cars, and uh, they don't blow their hands and all that, you don't hear a lot of noise, right? Like basically the exhaust pipe from those scooters. Here they do have scooters. Look, couldn't even hear that, right? They do have scooters, but they're silenced and they're electric. Taiwan do, of course, and they do have some scooters that silence. They have a, a brilliant technology as well as actually going around and then where basically uh, you can recharge the battery and uh, yeah you can ride I think it's very eco-friendly but unfortunately when it comes to noise pollution in Taiwan it is by far the worst I've experienced I mean honestly it's just so loud when it comes to uh, the scooters I mean here, yeah. oh boy, so, so relaxed. So nice to the hair, it's not a lot of noise pollution, it's brilliant. I mean the highway really, so inside you can hear the noise from the car passing by, right? And safety wise, when it, when it comes to us and crossing the streets, <laughs> it's a mayhem here, I mean honestly, right? It's crazy, like the drivers here, I don't know man, they're very nice people in person, but as soon as they're in the car, they just become dickheads. <laughs> they don't give you way to cross, right? Unless they're one or two who are very nice, they will give you way. And that's the same as well in Taiwan. And the other thing as well in Taiwan, I'll say, you don't have predestined walk path. It's really rare. In Taiwan, it can get very, very dangerous, right? I would recommend, <laughs> in fact, I was about to say, I would not recommend you to ride a scooter, right? Yeah, basically, do not ride a scooter in Taiwan. It is dangerous. I can ride a scooter, right? I've ridden a scooter in, in Indonesia, in Vietnam, a little bit in, in Thailand, and that ended so badly. Luckily, I'm alive. Let's put it that way, right? And uh, I would, I've learned my lesson, Thailand, and uh, what is it? And Taiwan? Never, <laughs> never, so dangerous, oh my god, like literally if you want to turn left right, in certain interception, you can't just turn left, you have to go and do a crazy maneuver, position yourself well, wait for the, for the light and then before you can go, if you do that, you are going to be in a lot of mess, I mean honestly right, so you can get a lot of dangerous. China, no way. Taiwan, it's a glorious, beautiful highland. I will highly recommend anyone to visit. 
you know, I'm not biased. Me honestly, like what I experienced, what I will tell you, right? I did have a, a good time. <laughs> what I went to um, Kaohsiung was beautiful, man. A lot of um, other foreigners. Nice party. I saw a girl, uh, an African girl. She got a, a nice behind. It was glorious. I mean, honestly, right? I was losing my cool. I was like, God damn, go! <laughs> Legally making me go crazy. Nah, that was something else. Out of this, out of this world. It was. I mean, too, too much. Way too much. Nah, 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 nah. She was built different, and it's all natural. That's right. So it's, it's, it's a very cool place. The so Kaohsiung is by far my favorite place in Taiwan, and uh, it's very, very. I mean, very, very good. Taipei is cool, but yeah, Kaohsiung is better. You know, that's the thing I like about Kaohsiung. Kaohsiung, it's more. I think it got that. That cool vibe to a good mix. It's a little bit cultural and at the same time, you know, very modern. Yeah, and uh, I think there, most likely you can get a better apartment. Yeah, so now in terms of transportation, moving around, amazing. Places amazing, right? You don't have to worry. It's so they're just the same. I mean, honestly, right? Basically, when it comes to transportation, like they have the high speed rail there, you know, and uh, here they do have it as well. I mean, it's everywhere, so that's the best way you can travel here in China, and it's much cheaper, very, very convenient. And I highly recommend you you take the high speed rail um, when you are here in the mainland in mainland China. It's by far the best, and uh, in Thai. In Taiwan, they do have the metro system. There, it's very good as well. Very, very, very cheap. And uh, so, yeah, I think that one is a draw. Absolutely a draw. Superb class. Way better than what we have back home in the UK. You know, we have a good infrastructure in place. Okay, not good. Okay, infrastructure. And uh, it will get you places compared to America. They have nothing. Like the infrastructure is really good here. So, how about the food? Food. <laughs> You are not, you are not going to be disappointed in, in mainland China and of course in, in Taiwan. Oh my God, this place, huh? They do have some wonderful food. I cannot believe it. No politics, all right? <laughs> politics aside. I mean, the food is so good. I'm a foodie, I love food, right? But I stopped making food videos. And uh, my weight, get, you know what I mean? <laughs> get out of hands, you know what I mean? So basically, and then why I look chubby now and now. I get so lazy to work out. And uh, yeah, and I'm constantly traveling. It's not easy, so I think that's the reason why I, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to cut that down, stop eating, stop making a lot of food videos. And I've done that successfully. And then now look at me still, I haven't lost that weight. Imagine, right? So it's crazy. We had the food in, in mainland China and, and Taiwan, by far the best. Absolutely. He's trying to show me where I can find a chicken spot, right? She's so cool, man, but she doesn't speak English and she's, she's so shy. <laughs> the best, great, fantastic. I mean, honestly, going to the night market, they do have, and that's the one thing I'll say Taiwan night market is far better than here in the mainland. I can't come, oh my god, I can't believe it, man. There, especially in the capital city here, in the, you don't see it, it's not here anymore, right? I think because of uh, safety. You saw I bought um, a street food from a street food vendor in this, let's say, very, very <laughs> high end area of Beijing. And uh, yeah, it's not allowed because of food hygiene and uh, I think I understand that. In the UK you will never see the sort of thing because of food safety as well. But the most important thing why a lot of people come here to Asia is the, the, that, that rawness, you know, when it comes to the street food and that culture element of it, right? I think and sometimes maybe they shouldn't 
I shouldn't get rid of that because I think um, it's so it's so real, it's so authentic, really. I just love it. Of course, they do have night market here in the mainland, but it's more modernized now. You know, it's mainly indoors, well-established brand, so establishment vendor. So in case something happens to you, they can easily track that vendor or that let's say that business, so they can know exactly what really happened. You know, and uh, yeah, but in Taiwan street food are everywhere. I mean, literally every night you go out, it's everywhere. It's scattered, man. Look at this. This is wonderful. You see this ladies again, and you got this here. Woo! My days. This is something else. This market will make you become fat if you're not careful. Oh yeah. Nah, it's it's it's, it's brilliant. I mean, that aspect is very brilliant. I love that. So yeah, I forgot to mention something very important when it comes to world safety. They are safe. Mainland China and Taiwan, safe. Safest place I've ever been in my life. I mean, honestly, right? They're way safer than where I'm from. No, <laughs> way, way safer. I mean, oh yeah. So when it comes to us making money, you make more money here. Yeah, in mainland China than you will in, in Taiwan. If you're a teacher and uh, let's say, whatever job you, you want to work, or you want to do here in, in Taiwan? Oh, Taiwan pay shit. Bloody hell. I don't understand. And the, the, the cost of living is so high and the pay is so rubbish. I mean, I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to be like that, but oh, I mean, seriously, no, 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 no. I don't really like it when it comes towards that. Like, that's the reason why I left. You know, honestly, I can't, I can't leave by just uh, making cop let's say $1,000 a month or one, $1,500 a month. That is so low. <laughs> I make more than that when I'm in the UK, right? So why would I go and settle for that in, in East Asia where things are slightly expensive? Hello? Yeah, so I was like, not, not doing that, you know? So yeah, that's one of the key factors why I left um, Taiwan, right? Course, um, it's not all about the money, but of course, my time is very important as well. You know, I'm getting older and I got some needs, you know. So, of course, and I want to get to certain things and I'm traveling as well. So, I've got to be honest, right? This is a honest opinion. If you don't like it, I think um, I'm sorry and uh, you're not gonna like me, but I'm just being honest, right? So, yeah, now in terms of the people, the people in, in mainland China are insanely friendly. So, us in Taiwan, this one is a draw. They're the same. They're literally the same people, I'm mean, being honest, right? I mean, they speak the same language. No politics. I ain't gonna get into that. You're probably gonna like, Chico, where, where do you stand? Is Taiwan a country or not? I ain't gonna talk about that. You know, my channel is not about politics, right? My channel is all about my experiences capturing and traveling to different places. I think I missed just two points. Um, ease of communication, oh boy, this one is very key, right? So when it comes to communicating in mainland China, it's difficult, right, with the locals. And uh, here, a lot of the people don't speak English. And the NSY is the English market, teaching English as a teacher. You can make good money, especially if you have experience. If you have a bag of experience, two, one, even one year of experience, you make good money, two, good money. You have PhD or let's say education degree, make good money you come from the uk america canada western country fantastic money man is the you make serious money but of course you have to work for it as well it's not easy it's a very complex job but then again it's also very rewarding yeah when you work here the lot the, the work-life balance here is amazing compared to taiwan you know so when it comes to us convenient here in in mainland china the qr code for everything right you want to pay for thing QR code, everything QR code. I think Taiwan, it's a little bit, yeah, just it's getting there, you know? It's not like it's far behind. Of course, in that place is, is, is growing, man. I think a large part of East Asia is up there. It's advancing way ahead of um, Western world, right? So. In conclusion, we all have things we like. For me, for now, my like, the things I like, the things that drives me, 
is here in China. Comfort, safety, food and hospitality, financial freedom, generally I'm happy. And places like Taiwan and mainland China bring a lot of joy. And the people are friendly and happy. And the food and it's a safe place. And surely the Taiwanese or the Chinese don't hate each other. Maybe it's best for us Westerners to mind our business. Because in this side of the world, you will never understand it. I mean, it's too complex, too vast for a lifetime to understand.